So let me get this right. The same government that was sterilizing 100,000 dark-skinned women back in like the 30s to up to 2010. Now they want to turn around and save lives now that they killed over 100,000 possible life timelines. They want to overturn Roe vs. Wade now. We didn't even have a chance. Look at the amount of people that didn't get a chance that were black. Look at that spike, that red line. The shit was going down in the 70s and all the way up to 2010. So I know some of y'all trash ass motherfuckers are still in office. So now that you successfully wiped out 50 years and generations of dark skinned people from sterilization, now you think you can take control of the black woman's body again and overturn Roe versus Wade? Get the out of here, yo. Hundreds of thousands of lives over decades. The more I thought about it, the more unacceptable it is for our government to tell a woman the rights of her body, especially a black woman. Any avenue, any way that this could possibly happen by way of eugenics, for example. This is how dirty they were. More than 60,000 people were sterilized in about 32 states on the 20th century based on bogus science claims they used to try to kill Negroes. They had some other demographics, some other races, um, but from 1937 to 1966, black women were most likely to be forcibly sterilized, especially where there was like desegregation and then the white folks didn't want the niggas moving in. The Virginia Assembly's 21st century explanation for the law summarizes their development. The now discredited pseudoscience of eugenics was based on theories first propounded in England by Francis Galton, the cousin and disciple of famed biologist Charles Darwin. The goal of the science of eugenics was to improve the human race by eliminating what the movement's supporters considered hereditary disorders or flaws through selective breeding and social engineering. The eugenics movement proved popular in the United States, with Indiana enacting the nation's first eugenics-based sterilization law in 1907. In the following five decades, other states followed Indiana's example by implementing the eugenic laws. Wisconsin was the first state to enact legislation that required the medical certification of persons who applied for marriage licenses. The law that was enacted in 1913 generated attempts at similar legislation in other states anti-miscegenation laws, banning interracial marriage between whites and non-whites, had existed long before the emergence of eugenics, first enacted during the colonial era when slavery had become essentially a racial caste. Such laws were in effect in Virginia and in much of the United States until the 1960s. The first law banning all marriage between whites and blacks was enacted in the colony of Virginia in 1691. This example was followed by Maryland in 1692 and several of the other 13 colonies. By 1913, 30 out of the then 48 states including all southern states enforced such laws. These people don't care about life. They just care about the power that they exude over that life. 